On this episode of Watch Time, we're going to be talking about the importance of planning, again, and why it's crucial for creating quality shots that fit your brand right after this. Welcome back to Watch Time, everybody. So as we talked about in the uh, intro to this video, we're going to be talking about planning yet again. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's that important. <laughs> <laughs> the common theme of all these podcasts is definitely planning and, you know, just trying to make sure you come in knowing what has to be done. Mm -hmm. And I know we were calling it show up and shoot. Why does show up and shoot not work? And I, I do think... You know, for everybody that's watching and listening, you've probably, whether you've been a videographer, whether you're a marketing person, salesperson, whatever, business owner, you've had this experience where you've probably had a videographer show up, shoot a bunch of B-roll, like just a bunch of clips, like, hey, I'm going to be at my desk or I'm going to be getting in and out of my car. Let's just get some footage. And you want to build something with that. And though, you know, that is a good method if you're on a budget, it doesn't always give the best results. And I think that's kind of where the disconnect is. I think people see videos on, um, you know, whether it be on other websites, whether it be movies, you know, they see these things and they kind of see the end result and they think, oh, they just showed up with the camera or, oh, you know, they just, you know, we just need that tight shot of that person's hand on the door, on the door opening it up or, you know, just that tight shot or that wide shot of the person jumping in the truck and we should be good and that'll like cover everything. But I think where the misconception is, is, you know, what you see visually with your eyes, whether it be in a video or whether it be if you're thinking through it, is very different in the camera. The camera requires much more light, requires much more planning, focus, things of that nature. And, you know, we really wanted to hit on like why that video you created maybe didn't quite look the way you wanted it to look. Yeah, I, that was really something that was interesting to me um, when I learned that about video that the, the way you're looking at things, it doesn't always translate to the camera. Like your, mm -hmm. your eyes sees col see color differently and, and lighting. And so it's it takes more planning, again, <laughs> than people think. Um, so I, I, we were talking earlier, and I, I like, um, Bill, you brought up something about how there's no happy accidents. That really, you know, it, it's not like you're going to... Um, accidentally get this fantastic shot or something i mean mm -hmm. maybe maybe you will but but rather like when you're investing in video do you really want to take that risk like you you want to maximize your investment and that means maximizing the planning and and the hours that we're putting mm -hmm. in um because maybe you can talk a little bit about how it feels when our team does have to do a show up and shoot like maybe just the feeling versus like that versus after we had had done planning well first i'd like to just say that um we though you know like sometimes people think that we're like bob ross we're not so <laughs> yeah. um there there is there's no, no replacement for him <laughs> <laughs> there's no happy accidents i mean there there are to some extent yeah. i guess you know like when you have somebody go out and they just start shooting b-roll and let's say you've watched a video where you've hired someone to just follow you around for the day and then you're watching it and there's always like one shot or two shots. You know, I kind of look at it. It's like golf, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a horrible golfer, but occasionally I hit a really good shot mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, I'm a good golfer. So it's the same thing with video is like, you'll see one or two really good shots and you don't know why they're really good, but like compared to the rest of the shots in, in this whole sequence of the person following you around for the day, these two just really stand out. And it's because that was the happy accident. Mm -hmm. And with, planning in pre-production like all of those shots could be that happy accident and I, I think that's where the disconnect is you know because sometimes I think a lot of times it's an outside shot that looks that good because the lighting is just right whether it be from the sun or the time of day um, it just kind of played into that but especially when you're getting interior shots pre-planning is so important there's so many things you know we talk about that can go wrong when you're not using proper lighting you know, you could have different color temperatures. Um, you could have an instance where maybe the whole room just needs more lighting because it's just way too dark for the camera because not all cameras are created equally. Um, maybe you need more of the room to be in focus, which will require you to kind of bump your aperture. So maybe you want to be at a nice, you know, 5.0 aperture and not a 1.8, but you have to be at a 1.8 to be able to see the room. So and you, aperture is... That's going to be your... light. That, yeah, that's how much light is being mm -hmm. led into the sensor on the camera. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, 
you get like a 1.8 aperture. It gives you a really shallow depth of field. So that's the blurry background that everybody loves so much. Um, but with that, you lose how much can be in focus. So if you're like, hey, I want to get a nice wide shot of this room, I personally wouldn't shoot it at a 1.8 because not everything's going to stay in focus. Um, you're going to have sections of the room in focus. But you might need to be there in order to allow your camera to have enough light to be in there. But if you, if you like get the shot that you need. But if you had lighting in the room, then you could be at a 5.0. So these are all things and considerations that need to, to happen. Um, you know, when I've talked with uh, Josh and Najada on here, I know it came up numerous times, like doing a site visit, walking through, seeing what's there, planning some shots out ahead of time, understanding like how things are going to go. Like, you know, for example, if you're in an office and you want to follow a package around the office because like maybe you send the package from one side to the other side and that's how this piece of equipment gets built well what does that look like you know like are you going from a warehouse into a office space well does the lighting change you know not only color but the amount of lighting um what's the path that gets taken like are you going to is there a point where the camera can't follow them because there's just not enough room do we need to like widen that aisle way and that's where like these things that are happy accidents don't like really happen that often when you just show up and you kind of have to do it on the fly you end up having to sacrifice something something has to be sacrificed oftentimes it is quality oftentimes it is the shot um, you still get something but it's just not as professional and I think the frustration to answer that point of the question that um, maybe I have and the team has is you know we show up for the client we want to give them the best product that we can give them and that's because we're a professional video production company. You know, we want to help them with their production and their marketing. We want their product to stand out so somebody goes, wow. Like, maybe they don't know why they said wow, but they just say, wow. Like, it catches their attention. And when we don't get to do that, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for us on site because we're trying to figure this out and we're losing time. You know, we, maybe we have an eight-hour day, and now we're dwindling time that we could be spending on another shot. And now we're not going to get that shot. Um, we're also frustrated because, you know, we want to keep things progressing so we can get done on time. And now this is slowing that down. Everybody knows that we have a certain amount of budget allotted for this, and they want to be able to hit that budget and not cause overtime because that's an uncomfortable conversation with the client. So there's just a lot of frustration on location. Then we get back and we look over the footage, and I feel like in post-production between the edit team and the shooting team, there's frustration because you know now the edit team has to try and make up for what the shooting team didn't have planned. Yeah. Well, maybe we can crop this here, and maybe we can add some blur to this so it looks like it's intentional. Maybe we can adjust these colors, and maybe now instead of just you know doing you know 20 to 30 minutes of color correcting, we got to spend three hours on this thing, and we have to you know stabilize it in post production because we weren't able to get a stable shot. So. Now the computer's rendering that out for a half hour that we weren't expecting. So there's just a lot of frustration on location after. And then when it's done, a lot of times, you know, the clients are always happy. You know, we don't have very few instances where the client's like, I didn't like this, you know, and mm -hmm. um, we always deliver what they want. But it's putting in additional time. It's causing our team a lot of stress and it's sacrificing creative quality to be able to achieve a goal. And that's really what's happening. Yeah, I, I think you touched on so many important points there. I mean, when you're planning on the fly or trying to figure something out on the fly or even just capturing something, um, you know, that maybe could have been staged mm -hmm. and you're doing it, you know, live, I think it just creates a lot of chaos. And it's not only like chaos for our team, it's also chaos for whoever we're working with and maybe your employees who are trying to do their job at the same time. Like I, I think about like an example, say we're, we're shooting in a hair salon mm -hmm. and we're going in there, you know, we have like a general idea, but we haven't done a pre-production plan with like exactly what shots we want. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also the business is open and you actually have clients in there mm -hmm. and you have people working. Some of the things that I think could result in, in that instance is that, you know, you have everybody trying to do their job. Like you mm -hmm. have all the hairstylists trying to like work with the clients 
And so that like creates like an immediacy of trying to get the shot in action, you know, we versus like maybe planning to have done the shoot um, while the business was, was closed with mm-hmm. maybe like a couple people who are, you know, actors or, you know, volunteers that come in and get their hair cut. Because we can't say things like, hey, can you, you know, can you maybe... Um, comb through the hair again or mm-hmm. whatever shot we're looking for. Like, you know, can you, can you, we're going to get a close up now are you, of you washing their hair. Mm-hmm. Like we don't want to interfere with um, what's actually happening and, and the way the business is operating. So, um, so it creates like a lot of chaos in that environment. And then also you talked about um, lighting, like w- lighting really is one of the major factors of creating a high quality looking video. Like how you said, maybe, um, you know, you see a video and you're not really sure why it looks so high quality. A lot of that is lighting. And the thing about lighting is it has to be set up step by step. Mm -hmm. So that does take time. You can't just, you know, do that while you're missing other shots of something going on. So just some some examples of, of maybe like how that could be a create a chaotic environment and how planning could help remedy that well i think one thing that it you know it's one thing that i really think about when you talk about this like lighting and and this i think the worst thing to ever happen to our industry and and to to people that are trying to create content was the commercial for the iphone where they now have cinema mode and they're like we shot this movie all with an iphone we did you know you have the power of cinema in your pocket they say that in all these like apple commercials and it looks awesome but if you read at the very bottom, <laughs> underneath the commercial, it says shot on the iPhone, and it'll give you the model. And it says with additional lighting, sound, grip, and they'll have all these things, uh, different equipment with it. So, yeah, you're shooting with your, you know, people go, well, I, I, you know, I got a $1,500 iPhone. Yeah, you're shooting with your $1,500 iPhone. I totally get it. But that commercial with Apple that was shot with the $1,500 iPhone, it was also shot with sixty dollars to $70,000 worth of lighting and grip equipment. And that's one thing that people don't realize. And, like... You know, it's not the camera. And we had a whole conversation with Najata about that on here. It's not the camera. Like people think, well, if I can buy this camera, then I'm a professional and mm-hmm. I can achieve great quality. And the reality of that is is so far from the truth. Like it's the lighting. It's yeah. the audio. It's the people. It's the talent. That's what you're bringing in. That's what creates this amazing quality. And, you know, and if people don't believe that, I mean, and Najat, I like to use him as an example because we just had this conversation the other day with him. You know, he goes, people watch a movie or a television show and they take it for granted because at the end, they don't think about the thousands of names that are scrolling down the screen or flying through there. The produ- and even some of them are production companies. Like they don't even, they'll just say like, here's a production company. So on top of the thousands of names, here'll be a, you know, thank you to this production company. And they probably have another hundred to 200 people working for them, working in post-production. Yeah. Um, you know, like color in movies, like you have a whole color team in movies that's specifically dedicated to different portions of the movie. It might just be, you know, working on color for the skies, for the clouds, um, you know, for production, you have a whole grip and electric unit. You have people hanging up lights to like help like fill the sun. I mean, tons and tons of lights. And that's like, and so when you, you know, when we go out there to create this and we don't have that ability, I mean, we don't have, you know, the, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 lights that we can, worth of lights that we can hang up from a grid and like, okay, the sun's over here. We're going to shine this over here and we'll fill you. You know, we have a gri- uh, grip and electric expert, a gaffer with a reflector trying to like use a reflector to help throw some light back on the person. And, you know, that's essential to be able to make it look right. Cause maybe you just need a little bit of fill right here. Cause the sun's coming down over here. And those are the things that people aren't, aren't thinking about when they see something, they'll see a person outside and they don't think about, you know, like what else is going on out there. I mean, we shot a video last summer for uh, one of our public safety clients and we had to rent an eight by eight diffuser and we have photos of it on our website. So anybody wants to see that. And I put it on there purposely, like the diffusers up over the person and over the vehicle. And then we have a 600 watt light that's right up against them just to get lighting on their to help get lighting on their equipment and then we have somebody right up in there getting tight shots of the equipment so we have an eight by eight eight foot by eight foot grid that's suspended i don't know 10 feet high we have a key light that is being used to 
on max on its max setting, 600 watts, being used on that gear just so we can get a tight shot, mm -hmm. a tight shot of a pouch on this guy's vest. And mm -hmm. that's the reality of it. When you want to get high-end professional looking stuff, th that's the that's the process. You know, and yeah. you can't just you could show up with the camera, and you'll get something. I take a lot of pride in the fact that, you know, we always get good footage, mm -hmm. um, and we you know, we always make it work for the client, but it could just be so much better. Yeah. And that's the thing. And with all the footage that's out there today, you know, like people want to know, how do we stand out? How do we stand out? Well, you stand out by having good writing and by having good planning and then having, you know, a video that looks high end because everyone else is shooting on this. You yeah. Know, everyone else is buying red cameras and no, not investing in lighting. I'm going to buy a $10,000 red camera instead of a $2,000 Sony camera and then invest the other $8,000 in lighting and sound. Mm -hmm. They just want a $10,000 camera because it looks cool mm -hmm. or because it makes them feel like a filmmaker. But we're showing up and we're investing in that other end that's making it look more professional. Yeah, I think that's so so important what you said about investing in, you know, really great writing and, and really great, um, um, you know, professional video. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's just, there's so... Um, like you said, we, we really just want to deliver like the best product we can. Mm -hmm. And when you're not planning, I mean, there's been times where, you know, after the fact, it's, it's almost like if people haven't thought about it in advance, it's like after the fact, after we've gone through the shoot, it's like, you know, I'd really like this in the video and this and this. And it's like, well, we didn't capture that because yeah. we didn't, that wasn't in the plan. And we hate that feeling because, you know, we, we could have easily incorporated that into the day, that day that you're paying for and investing in. And then we've had people come back and, you know, maybe offer, well, can I just get another shot of it on my phone? And all the reasons you just explained will be like why that, honestly, that, that phone footage is going to look super weird compared, with, to, our compared to our stuff yeah so that doesn't solve the issue it's not as easy as that i wish it was <laughs> but you know that's why you really want to have your plan pretty fleshed out ahead of time um so that we can you have a professional team there like take advantage of us let us maximize what we can get for you i was just saying the other day we were talking in the office for doing some editing and i think it was the saying that i i was throwing out there was if you fail if you fail to prepare prepare to fail mm -hmm. and like you know it's no secret on here i talk all the time like about my before starting this company i was a police officer and um you know like i take a lot from that career and one of the things that i take from that career is we always believed there were there were things there were three things that we always wanted to be successful to be able to get our job done, go home safe and go home so, and everyone else can go home. Nobody gets hurt. And the, the three things that we always wanted was as much advanced knowledge as we could get. So as much um, detail, as much information, information was key. We always, you know, Intel, Intel's key. We always wanted distance. Distance is key because distance gives you time. So with Intel and time, everybody can make an informed decision and go home and you know everyone go home safe at the end of the day and a lot of times you know you don't always have that and what ends up happening when you don't have good intel and you don't have time you are forced to make a split second decision and sometimes with split second de decisions they come out okay but there are a lot of times and people see them out there that they don't yeah. and it's not and it's not just law enforcement that's everything military that's fire that's outside of the safety services i mean Every job out there, arguably, you know, I have contractors in my family, and if you send them in to go do contracting work and you don't give them good intel, they don't know what they're working on, and you don't give them time to get the job done, you're going to get a shoddy job. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to say, well, I don't understand why it's shoddy. Well, it's because you didn't give them what they needed to do it. So mm -hmm. any job out there, you know, I think, what is it? Any any job worth doing is worth doing right or mm -hmm. worth doing well. Yeah. And and we believe that here. So I, yeah. you know, I, I just thought this was such a good conversation for us to discuss this because I think the, the common misconception is, and I get it, people see with their eyes and they say, okay, I, I envision this. Or if I walk into this building, I see this person in front of me getting on an elevator and I see the elevator door closing and then I see the numbers going up and they, they, they're seeing it like they would see it in a movie. And what they're not thinking about is we're shooting in 10 bit color. And like you said, the human eye sees so many more colors. You know, we're shooting in multiple focal lengths. As, as the human eye works, you could see a wide shot. You could see a tight shot. 
you can see a medium shot. We have to switch lenses to be able to do that. So what you're seeing in your mind and thinking like, oh, this can be done with one camera, no lighting, because I already envision it and I've been in that lobby and I've seen it before and can be done within a half hour. You have to take into account, like you're saying, like the pre-planning, because you need to know what shots you need to get before you go in, the time to light it, the time to shoot it multiple times because you're going to switch lenses and focal lengths, the time to check that, and the time that you might need to go back and get a shot that didn't work out because something went out of focus. Because I can move around, and the human eye is such a fascinating thing because you can focus on things, you can create shallow depth of field by just like looking at something and everything else blurs out, but you could also like look at a wide shot of things and see everything in focus. The camera doesn't work that way. So it just requires yeah. that time. Yeah, it's, it's like translating things to another language. And, and, and that's kind of what we do in a pre-production call. Like, like at, I, I guess I want people to know, like, the planning portion is so important. But it, I promise, like, we make it real easy. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like, it's not going to add a lot of time or expense. You know, it's a lot more expensive to have to come back out and reshoot you know, do another shoot where we, we miss things because we didn't talk about it ahead of time or something, you know, or, or, or in the editing time it's going to take to make that magic happen because we weren't able to, like, get the shot, you know, that we needed the first time, and now we got to do all these tweaks and different things. So it's, 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 it's really as, as easy as, you know, we have, we have a short call mm -hmm. um, to talk about, you know, what your vision is, and we can kind of translate that into what we need to do with the equipment to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And then having a shot plan, you know, and, and some basic script to be able to know what we're ultimately trying to create. Well, a great example. It's funny that we're having this conversation literally yesterday, or maybe it was the day before I was watching a YouTube video. Um, Chris Doe from the future, if anybody's watched that, F-U-T-U-R on YouTube, great channel. And he's a, he's a graphic designer. He's done video, he's done animation, and he really talks about the business side of things. And one of the videos I was watching was, was a breakdown of what is good graphic design, you know, and they talked about that, like what's good graphic design versus bad graphic design. And he said that, you know, it's really hard to say, tell good versus bad, right? So, because good, like we were talking about, if you go out and shoot a bunch of stuff right now and you don't have lighting and you don't have a plan, it'll still be good. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to differentiate good versus bad. So he said, let's take this a step further and let's say, because you can differentiate these two, what's excellent graphic design versus bad graphic design? Because the threshold is so vastly different. And they talked about what makes excellent versus bad. He goes, because everybody, you know, design principles was one of the things they talked about, but everybody has design principles. If you're a graphic designer, you, you know the design principles. Now, maybe if you're not a graphic designer, you don't, so that puts you in that bad category because you might not know why to do things a certain way. But when they started talking and really breaking it down, like what makes graphic design company A better than graphic design company B? And it really came down to planning. And he said for himself personally, he goes, I get on a call with people and I ask a lot of questions. And his, his, he said his business advisor, his mentor told him, just, just tell people up front, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And you're probably going to get annoyed because I got to ask you all these things. But the reason I'm asking you is because I want to deliver something that you have envisioned in your mind or that you, it gives you a feeling of your brand. And I need to understand what you're thinking, what your brand is, why you do what you do, why you feel like you do in order to create something where you look at it and go, that's amazing. Like, yeah. that's exactly what I want. And that's the importance of, of pre-planning. That's what makes something excellent versus just good. Yeah. And don't you want that when you're making your marketing investments, when you're investing in video? Like, don't you want the very best that you can achieve within your budget? You yeah. know, and, and we want that too. So, so again, planning, it's not the first time you've heard it and it's not going to be the last. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yes. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. I mean, I, mean, I, I think you know, we're, we're not trying to complicate things and, and, you know, we know that time is precious, but planning can really save you a lot of time and create something really high quality. So we hope that this is helpful for you and thank you again for watching. Thanks for listening to Watch Time. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And if you want your question answered on our podcast, go to flexmediacle.com backslash watch time.